Welcome back to episode three of my nomad sculpting journey. Today I decided to sculpt another kitty cat. I did an alien kitty cat last night. I did not record it sadly even though I really do love how this came out and it reminds me of Toy Story and the aliens with the claw in it if you know what I mean. If you're old enough to remember that I'm sure most people know actually. So anyways of course I start with the spheres and I don't really have an, an idea, permanent idea for what I'm doing other than I want to do a cat because I'm just in my cat era right now. I think I want to do different designs of cats in different ways like space cats or strawberry cats, goblin cat, I don't know what that means but we can figure it out together I guess. And of course the mirror tool comes in so handy when you're sculpting so you only have to do really one side at a time without having to mess up or if you, like so it looks the same on each side it's so nice and then I go in of course with all circles for the most part so cause that's the easiest to sculpt with I believe because um, you don't have to worry about weird edges or anything like that and most things are made out of circles especially things that are alive that sounds really weird but like if you, you can draw the outline of most animals or even plants with circles. Like if you just use circles to draw them, it works. Now I use this new tool, not, it's not new to Nomad Sculpt, but new to me, it's the curve tool. So what it does, it makes all the, for instance here, the spheres go in a row, depending on how, what your count value is. Um, I did have to redo it because I accidentally made the circle a little like egg shaped instead of keeping it sphere shaped or even and it just I didn't want to flat. So I'm using this to make the arms so it's more fluid and less um, rigid is what I'm not going for. So here I redo it with the new circle and then I just use the curve tool and redo those arms so they're kind of sticking out because I want them to be holding something. At first I wanted this cat to have a chef's hat and it just didn't turn out that way as we see but I'm really happy with the witch's hat and the star and how cute it came out. And then I, I don't know why I go into this and change the background I'm just trying to make it pop a little bit more and then I decide to work on the body make it a little bit squished up more because that's just really cute I think. And I do end up making the body and arms a bit smaller because I think it just makes the overall look a little bit better. Here I use the inflate tool to make the little paw beans. So I don't know what you would call them, paw toe beans. And I like how that came out, but then I tried to make the paw pad a little bit obvi more obvious, like a paw print. And I just did not like how it turned out. I used the carve tool to like make it more outlined. Not, I didn't enjoy that. It just kind of looked like, as you can see on the left side, just a little weird so I negated that and just smoothed it out and just kept it out it is because I end up making a star and it kind of covers up the paws anyways you're not really focused on that so go out and smooth it out make it just look nice and then I do kind of make the arm shoulder blades or shoulders go in more so it's just a little bit better looking now I did have to use a reference photo for the hind legs of a cat because I was just going to put like spheres, just like the arms, and I was like, that doesn't look right. It kind of just looks like stick legs. And I forget their haunches, they're kind of like large oval spheres or whatever. And so I used that and their feet are flat, like long, you know, how they stand. And I wasn't going to go into like super big detail, but I thought that it would look cuter if it was a little bit more true to how cats actually look. And then I voxel remesh the hind legs and the feet together so they're a little bit smoother, shorten the feet, just kind of make them a little bit more, I guess, cat-like in my mind and how it worked out. So I liked how it turned out.
So I believe iVoxel remeshed the head a lot, at least up till 300 where it, you can do that. So I could get a really smooth drawing of the eyes. And I had to redo this a couple times because I wasn't sure where these eyes should be and how big they should be. And I just wasn't getting a nice smooth look to them. So we're going for very big eyes because, you know, I learned that cats actually make their eyes bigger for people than they, for any other animal. They don't do it to other cats or other like dogs or animals. They do it specifically to humans because they know that we just won't give in if we see their huge big eyes. So I'm focusing on that, getting their little nose. I use the uh, masking tool and then extracting and it just makes it a lot easier because it's, I don't have to feel like I have to perfect a circle or a sphere and all that. And then actually the mouth was an issue for me. I couldn't decide if I wanted to carve it out or just use the carve tool. I ended up using the carve tool. So it's just easier that way. I'm just drawing a little tiny mouth and it's not supposed to be that big anyway or focal point. So that's what I did. And here again, I am using the curve tool again, just like I did with the arms to make the tail because I always had an issue with the tube tool of making it like perfectly in the middle. Now I know cat's tails or drawings and sculpting doesn't need to be perfect, but I just wanted this to be in the center and even everywhere. And I just messed around with it because it was wasn't exactly doing what I wanted it to do or like I, what, how I thought it would act and then it looked kind of like a raccoon or like a squirrel. So I just kept it with a more curve and I was just like, that's what it's going to be like. So next I did try to make like a chef's hat but I kept turning out to look like, I don't know, like a gentleman's hat um, or an Abe Lincoln hat and it was just not working out. This is the lathe tool. I love it for making like even shapes like this like bowls or hats and things like that. I do try and make it work but it's just coming out like Abraham Lincoln and I was not making an Abraham Lincoln cat. So I do redo it and I end up making a witch's hat. So here I fix it. I'm kind of nervous because I'm like, I'm not sure if it's going to do what I want it to do. And I end up making it into the witch's hat. And I just figured out it kind of looks like a policeman's hat right now, but slowly getting into witch territory to make it a little smaller because that was huge. That's huge. And it's just getting a little weird at first, but then you know, you're just going to trust the process sometimes. And I think I should have made the brim a little thicker just to work with it better. But you know what? It turned out fine and I think the cat still looks cute and the hat looks fine. Because I painted a dark blue color and you can't really tell the mistakes if there are any. I don't know. I just kind of messed with it afterwards. Um, so I turned off the symmetry tool and just used the move tool to make it... I don't want this to look symmetrical. I want it to look a bit more real not realistic but more lively so and nothing in life is symmetrical even to our best abilities there's something always a little off on one side so i feel like this looks a lot better if both sides don't look exactly the same so just mess with it you know i voxel remesh it so there's a little bit more like density of the clay to work with and smooth it out because you don't want all those weird lines and things like that you know i did go up actually a lot for this because it was so thin and I was like I should have made it a little bit thicker. Next I just decided that a star I thought was a, would be a good idea for the cat to be holding because it's mystical and all that and I used the radial tool. It took me a while to figure out which plane to work with um, because I needed to go from a ring around it not like that as you can see and you can do it from different directions and things like that and I had to figure it out. I was just like where am I going with this and you know I could make a flower cat that's what I was thinking when that happened but not right now so you just make it go back into the center and then you reduce the amount of I guess spheres there are to a five point um, star 
And I use the snap tool so it stays nice and perfectly angled. And there you go, a star. And voxel remesh it, that's what I tell myself. Just voxel remesh it, smooth it out, and it won't look like a papaya. No, a pep. Whatever that fruit was from Kingdom Hearts, a uh, alpu fruit. That's kind of what it's giving right now. But then I smooth it out and it just looks like a star. part I think the painting and coloring after getting your sculpt finished is one of the most favorite parts of the process because it's just like you're taking the design you made and then really bringing it to life and you can mess with all the colors and which way the, like layers and things like that and really see what you like because I started off with this like goldy brown because I thought that would go with, oh, with the blue um, Mm, it's not a magician's hat, a uh, witch's hat, and I just end up scrapping that color because I'm just like, it's way too, way too yellow, and I'm just like, that's just weird uh, for a cat, so I think I go with more of a beige and brown or something like that, and I think it turned out a lot better. Now, I did think that all black eyes would be kind of cute, but I was like, it's looks like sunglasses like the big bug sunglasses it's also very alien like and i'm not going for an alien cat and i was like oh yeah let me remind myself how i did the eyes last night and it was white and then i just colored in the pupil and look how cute that looks the, like big eyes and then i use my smoothie to uh you know like blend in the eyes so it's not as like harsh and i just do like a gold tint in the middle because cat's got that gold eye sometimes so I thought that'd be cute. So here's where I start to mess around with the cat's, um, what would you call that thing? Not their face paint but their fur patterns and stuff like that. And that's where I was like, ooh, I kind of like this color that I'm giving them. But I'm not really like liking this yellow undertone. So I keep going with it. So maybe it will look better after I mess around with it a little bit more. And then I just decide to scrap the base color and choose this color as the base. And oh my gosh, it looks so much better in this more like beige pale color than that orangey color and I color in the tail I add details things like that to make it look more like a cat and just a little bit cute to have a, a bit more depth I add some dots to the witch's hat in gold so they're reflecting with the light and yeah I just am adding in the details the sculpt's finished and the main colors are done I'm just fixing any imperfections that I see I do mess around with the star a little bit more so it looks more like jelly or like a glowing object. So that's really it. Um, came down to this and I actually really like how it turned out. Mess with the light some more, you know, give it some more color and depth to the sculpture. And that's what comes in when you, what is it called, render. When you render it, it will look really nice with the different colors and lighting because that will give it some realistic more realistic look to it um, but yeah you can mess around with that it's, it does take a lot of CPU I feel like or RAM all you nerdy folks you know what I'm talking about I don't know what I'm talking about in the right words only in theory um, but yeah here it's I start messing with the rendering put some I try to figure out if I like the eyes but I ended up just keeping it gold and because I was like white is too I don't know it, I just didn't like it and then I messed around with that I do kind of like just the opaque for the star but I just wanted something a little different than just opaque glossy and this is pretty much it <music>
So yeah, just mess around with settings, find something I like. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my other videos. I hope I'm getting better each day with how I'm sculpting and how I'm taking filming. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!